Work off and you're watching Desert TV. Cheers. Alright, alright. <laughs> Fuck! What a fucking awesome crowd. Cheers for coming out for us. Hey! Let's play some rock and roll! Let's Come in the stream! Get some more guitars, please. Oh. Right. Out on bow.
Bloody beautiful to see so many old friends coming back for more shows. Fucking much love and to all the new crew who's seen us for the first time. Much appreciated. Fucking owe ya. Oh. One thing that's so fucking beautiful about touring this country is getting to see so much of this beautiful land that we're on. But never forget that the land we're on always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Well, that's a fucking truth. Ah! Cheers. This one's for you guys there.
Yeah. 
Hey, it's Christian from Desert TV here with a couple of the boys from Coffin. How are we, boys? Yeah, real good. Yeah, doing well. It's good to be here. First time. Very awesome spot. Getting the royal treatment. So yeah, we are. Uh, we aim to please. Yeah. If you aim to please. Yeah. No, it's yeah. been fantastic. Definitely nice, going to play better here than anywhere else. Last uh, <laughs> last time I saw you, we, I was at Big Sound. You delivered a pretty pretty magical set there to a packed room at the zoo and had a few kick-ons and you've sort of seen or just come up and keep moving forward like you there's a real roll on underneath the band it must be cool to just be a part of that yeah it's yeah it's been pre pretty like crazy like especially since big sound and yeah we've just been so busy but like it's kind of weird to like stop and like take a look back at it and yeah reflect on stuff but yeah. it's just been a bit of a blur recently yeah. I think we did like so many years just hustling at kind of, you know, crap shows or just trying to, you know, introduce yourself to new territories and like it's a slog for a while, but now yeah, it seems to be paying off more and like, you know, it's nice now to go to places and yeah, have that crowd that's been there from the beginning and then you see how it grows and then mm -hmm. telling their friends and yeah. as more records get out and yeah, it's it's um it's definitely starting to pay off a bit which is nice it's hard to it's hard to look backwards when you when you're so busy and on the road like just yeah. to have that moment to think about where you came from and yeah, and on. yeah. I, I read that you guys let me chat about it too last time you you started when you were only like 11 12 years old as a as a band yeah, yeah real young yeah like, first first gig we had was in year seven <laughs> Sort of all met in primary school. I was still school. trading footy cards, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were oh, we too. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no we, we were lucky. We all grew up in the same area and happened to connect through friends or school and skateboarding and stuff like that. And then, you know, you realize you're in the same music. So we were just lucky to meet so early on, you know, because I feel like now a lot of friends that start bands, like it's hard to build that connection of friendship like later in life I feel like mm. you know sometimes you have those childhood friends and they always stay like it's almost they become family mm. particularly building friends under you know the juggernaut of touring there's a lot of stresses and yeah, you ups know. and downs and if you don't know someone like you know inside and out completely like all the best and worst qualities of someone definitely come out on <laughs> tour yeah. yeah and if you've got that history you know, you already know that stuff. You know people, you know their sensitivities, you know what space they need, you know mm. how to cheer them up, you know how to keep away from them. You know, you yeah. have all that history and training together. Yeah, it makes touring stuff. pretty easy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, whereas, you know, it's like I feel like if you go traveling like with a new friend or a friend of a friend comes along and you sort of like Don't the beginning. Don't want to step on their toes or something. Yeah, and, yeah, in like, the beginning of a trip you think like, oh, yeah, this is going to be great, or this person's awesome, and then you start to see the little cracks, cracks start to yeah. come yeah. out, and you're like, oh, fuck, this person's a bit of a psycho. Like, yeah. There's always a, the three rules of forming a band. It's like, can they play, can they, are they a fuckwit, and can they handle long periods on the road? And yeah. Yeah. you often get, like, two out of three, and exactly. you don't realise It's later. very hard to, like, yeah, have that complete combo, and that's, like, definitely a massive um advantage we've had is just having such long history with each other it's sort mm. of like you know we'd be hanging out regardless of the band um and that yeah definitely helps it keep going does the you know the perils of tour life like having that solid foundation does that ha has that affected the the original friendship or you guys are that you know each other that long no, that you just sort of power through definitely those i'd say just enhanced it yeah. it's unreal yeah yeah for sure Rolling, um, Rolling Stone style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I feel like, I don't know, as you get older, it's harder to create time to hang with friends anyway, you know. Yeah. Life gets busier and busier. And so, like, well, we still do see each other a fair bit out of the band, but it is nice, like, we have this forced time together. Mm. Um, and it's great because, you know, at least for me, I still want to hang out with these guys yeah, all yeah. the time. Such a plus. So that's you know, nice to know, like, oh, I haven't seen them for a couple of weeks, but I know these shows are coming up. Yeah. Or even just the simple fact of jamming, 
you know, if you have practice once a week or so, you know, you're going to see those friends where it's like other friends, you know, it's hard. You you don't mean to drop off and they don't mean to yeah, drop off. Yeah, but it's sort of never like know the next time you're going to see them. Or, oh, I've got work. I've got this. Yeah. I've got family stuff. It's harder it's to probably stay Probably the last touch. thing you're wanting to do on a night off is, you know, go and catch up at another gig or mm. probably no. need your sleep. Nah, you're still involved in the scene yeah, on no, the off nights? Massively, yeah. That's yeah. great. I think it's just more Maybe like, it's me. I'm fucking a bit older. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah. And no. you, you play uh, the drums and sing. Ben, there's not too many bands I know of that uh, that have that combo. It's such a wild combo, though. It's such a powerful combo. Were you always a drummer-singer or you just sort of picked that up later? No, I was just a drummer. Um, and then sort of when we started, it was funny. We had got this gig with the hard-ons um, when we were like, yeah, in, in year seven, it was our first mm. show. And we sort of got it by accident in a way, like one of the other guys in the band um, had sort of randomly got it for us because he said, oh, yeah, we've got a band to the guys put on the show at our high school. really... Yeah, and we didn't, we, we'd been jammy, but we had no songs. We didn't have a set. And when we jammed, it would just be us playing, you know, instrumental stuff. Yeah, in and grade then, seven. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. we're like, oh. So it was fucking great. Yeah. Yeah, we're like. You can like, imagine. What we got, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, I mean, we were all, we were into all types of music. And then, like, we became a punk band, you know, like, at yeah. that time because we were like, oh, Hard Ons is a punk band. We better make a punk set. Yeah. Oh, well. We were into, you know, Sex Pistols and yeah. all that shit, but we were also into ACDC and Black Sabbath and all these things, which I feel like we've moved back towards in terms of the rock and roll thing. Yeah. But it was just funny how that started. And we were like, all right, well, who's going to sing? And Short straw. Yeah, <laughs> it was basically like. <laughs> is there any other singers in the band? Well, I don't know. I, the way I, I feel like no I remember one that it, wanted to do it. Is right. that Abijah was like the only other member who could, who was good enough at his instrument to be able to sing as well. And he didn't particularly want to. Yeah. And the other guy was still getting his head around guitar. Yeah. So definitely wasn't going to be able to sing and play. And I was like, yeah, I'm keen to do it. And I don't know. It's kind of weird. It sort of wasn't really thought out. It's pretty wild that that, you know, original Hard Ons support formed your whole yeah sort of yeah. line up and style, like punk and the singing drummer thing. Yeah, it was funny too because, you know, like we were a bit like unsure about if the drummer singer thing would work out because you know it's not. I think it's dope. Common and you uh. s you know you don't see heaps of bands with that sort of like oh you know that do a band doesn't get anywhere for that or people don't respond to that. But we we're like, oh, fuck, who gives a shit? Let's just do yeah. it. And do you do stage setups where you're at the front? Uh, or like the whole ammo? Yeah, like when we when we play tour. with a bigger band, we got to set the drum kit up in front of <laughs> yeah. their drum kit. The forced. Yeah. Thing at the front. No, I mean, I would like to try, but it's a bit, I feel like I've spent so much time at the back coming forward, it would be a bit like, yeah. oh, fucking look at these guys up the front now. He he's a but star would be, now. I think when we've had shows that we've all played in a line, that's worked really yeah. Awesome, because that's sort of mm. what the band represents. It's like there is no front person really. Yeah, everyone's equal, which has helped the longevity of it too. Because mm. there's no front man syndrome, and then like playing in a line has been really cool. But a funny thing with that hard on show was I, I didn't know, like that the original hard ons lineup had a had, drummer had Cash oh, really? as the drummer singer. Yeah, right. yeah, and. Because when we saw them that night, it was when they had Peter Costick on drums and it was Ray and Blackie and Blackie was singing on guitar. Ray came up to me afterwards and, you know, I'm 12 years old and I'm like, oh, fucking hard on. Sick. He's, he's like, oh, mate, like, you know, that's really cool. You're a drummer singer. And he really bigged up, big up the whole thing. Yeah. Which, um, yeah, sort of like having that at the first show really affirmed like, no, this – this is right for us. Yeah. You know, and I, it was just wild that I never knew that they were another kind of iconic Australian band. It's wild to get that. Who had that exact setup that we had. Yeah. And to get that feedback at 12, at the you first know, show, when you're yeah. just starting, it, not many bands get that ever. But uh, yeah, like the damaged label, you guys and Dumb Punts and Drunk Mums, there's a, there's a consistent sort of style and genre. I, 
I'd say it's like an Aussie pub rock punk thrash kind of thing, mm-hmm. delving into social messages and there's an Australiana element to it. Is that something that's always been a focus of the band or is that just sort of developed over time? Yeah, I wouldn't say a focus, but it's just always something that is like important to us. Like definitely like we grew up listening to a lot of Australian music. So it's just heavily influenced us, even if it's like without us knowing. Or yeah, I think it just became natural. And I think also was like for us, yeah, they were some of our favorite bands. You know, we used to love sneaking into pubs as kids to see Celebrate Rifles or Radio Burman or something yeah. like that. Um, and I think also in terms of like, so yeah, there's like the Sonic side of that, which mm. we always loved how like, you know, bands like The Saints and everything always just cut through in some different way than the rest of the world, whether mm. it's us being extra isolated from the world, whatever, that sound always stood out to us. And then I think lyrically, it was just a matter of, you know, deciding or feeling like, okay, I always want to feel like the lyrics are genuine. So we write from like, you know, our own experience or observations, which mm. is here and who we are. So it sort of has come out And like do you, that. you put a bit of time, you know, like a lot of bands get their tracks down and, you know, Grinspoon example, they, or Nirvana, they, they throw out their lyrics on the last session of the recording, but are you, you're actually taking time to, to write the message. You spend a bit of time in that regard rather than just playing. Yeah, yeah. Like definitely it's become like... Um, I guess quite a key character of the band as well like you know trying to put a lot of time and like thought into the, the lyrics but I think like the most recent album is probably the one that I've been most prepared for in terms of writing and have really like gone over stuff whereas previous ones it'd be like you know, 80% there and then sort of a rush at the end to get yeah. it all together. And I think part of that was just because I wasn't c- as confident yeah. with it. So it would be like, oh, like I, I didn't want to have to address it until it was like mm. um, put due the date. On. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's sort of like, oh, I can't finish it until I'm like, okay, you have to have them done. Um, but especially when it's a, you know, there's a couple of your songs that are, have a political bent, like to commit to that and deliver it confidently. Yeah, it, is, I, is a skill. Yeah, and I kind of I think developed a process of where like I'll keep like an idea written down and keep adding to that idea. So I feel like all the stuff that I want to say or that's related to it is there, and it's just putting it together. Yeah, you know, or culling or editing it. Um, sometimes songs have just come in one sitting straight away, yeah. which is always nice and special. But yeah, like I definitely spend like the whole time leading up to you know in between albums, and even even songs that don't make it on will stay around and get maybe put on another one. Yeah, but it's like yeah, that process of just keeping notes underneath sort of what that song is going to be. That's cool. And then putting it together. Forms itself over time. Yeah, it just it feels less daunting than like having to sit down and like, you know, do a complete thing in without yeah. anything on a page already. Yeah.
Pleasure playing. Thank you so bloody much. Oh. I don't know what we're doing anymore. This Forgot to bring any water up. Now I've got to drink more beer. Shit. Here's a new one, give me a bite!
Cheers so much. We've been coughing. <laughs> Fucking love yous. And you're, uh, you're on tour at the moment. You played a couple of shows already on this tour. Gold Coast to Nine and Sunshine Coast tomorrow with a few other dates. Is it, where, where does this tour sit with the, the new album or is there a release sort of coming out? There's a release soon coming or? out next week. This is like a big publicity. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty much, pretty much a single tour, but like the yeah. single will come out. We've got- And what's that called? Cut You Off. Yep. Yeah. Well, so we'll be playing it tonight. Um, so it's be like, yeah, first tour where that's getting nice. shown and we're playing a few new ones tonight. But yeah, that'll be the first one which comes out next week. And then, yeah, I guess we'll do the whole drip feed thing, you know, release a couple other yeah. songs and then Play have the, the album out. Yeah. And you, you were saying earlier you're heading back over to the States and Europe. Is that later this year? We're going to the UK pretty much off the back of this run of shows. Yep. Um, for the Great Escape For the Great Escape and oh, then yeah. a couple of our own shows. So I think it's like the eighth or something is our last show or the seventh is our last show here and then straight over there to be there Through by the May. ninth or something. Yeah, yeah, and then we got asked to play Gornerfest in Memphis in September. I haven't heard of that one. Is that a big Yeah, big it's deal? pretty – it's like – I mean, Gorner Records is definitely one of my favourite yeah, right. sort of alternative um, – labels in the world and they put out so many great bands so it's like always you know nice to be acknowledged by like people who you look up to yeah um so yeah they asked us to come play this year in september so we've sort of built an american tour around that unreal which will be about a month and then yeah back to europe later in the year and do you think like after having those AML tours like was it, is there enough of a buzz around there after those, you know, pretty big events that, that we are to carry, carry you across the States and Europe yourselves? Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, yeah, I think, like, there's just such a hunger for Australian music, yeah. especially Europe. What do, what do you think that um, is, man? You know, like, the chats are just Well, we're putting up. out, there's so many good Australian bands putting out so mm. like much good music. Well, and, why do you think it's that Australian sound? Is it just because it's unique? Well, delivered definitely like rock, from like the rock and roll side of things, it's hard for Australian bands. Like you've got to like dig in if you want to play shows. Like you'll be playing at a pub to like no one there. Yeah. And you'll keep slogging it out and doing that. So like once you get to the point where you are releasing stuff and it's getting released over in Europe and stuff, mm. you've already kind of like fought through a gauntlet to get mm. there. And well, like, What do you think it is about the Europeans that, you know, relate to – to the style of music that you guys are playing though. And a lot of bands like you. Yeah, well, I think they, you know, there's like, I, don't, I think like what we were saying earlier about how like Australian rock and roll bands and like m music in general, I feel like down here always stands out, even in other areas like surfing, skateboarding, mm. art, like we don't have as much backing behind those things here, but yeah the stuff that does push through is always like, you know, heavily acknowledged by the rest of the world. Mm. And maybe because there isn't that, that corporate well, sort of slam yeah, that it feels raw and genuine. And I think something about- Yeah, definitely the raw and yeah, genuine. Yeah, something like, about like the, the sort of drive that you have to have to make it in the arts in Australia, like probably gives yeah, us- The mongrel. Yeah, something yeah, that so makes easy it stand to just, out. To just say, oh no, fuck that. Yeah, like, it's fucking hard, man. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. so, all the ma all the bands and artists that do like persevere and push through. Yeah. It's like, yeah, quality by the time yeah. it gets to that. Yeah, like I think a lot of places that we've been to overseas, um, where we've spoken to other musicians and stuff, like they're definitely working hard, but it sounds like there's a lot more support around it. Like you know, they can get, mm. you know government money for stuff easier right touring's easier in terms yeah. of like you know in australia if you do an australian tour how many shows can you realistically do mm. before you've covered the country yeah you know and like and then it's hard if you want to go to the west coast like yeah you're lucky to break whereas even. if you live in yeah. germany or if you live you know in the states 
you know, you can play Capital City every 30 three, shows hours. in 30 yeah. days. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I guess it does develop our resolve. Yeah. Yeah. Having to be on the sure. road and fly five hours, you know, over to Perth yeah. <laughs> and lose money. They're just like yeah. road dogs. And then probably it is when we do go over there, it's such a big thing for us. And it's sort of like, well, I don't know when this is going to happen again, yeah. that we probably push it to 110 Are you hitting Perth on this tour? No. Nah. No. Nah, but time. when we do an album tour, we will. But that's the thing, like, it's just so much money to get over there. Yeah, and it's, it's a big like, risk. you got to, we're saving to try and get overseas. So yeah, I think another thing too, like, that's helping or that's making Australian stuff so popular over there is just the fact that Australia's putting out really good stuff mm -hmm. and it's building like, you feel it over there, you know, it's snowballing. Like they see one Australian band and those bands tell people about their mates' bands. Right. And then it's really cool at the moment. I think yeah. when we're going to be like over in Europe and the States, there's like, you know, four or five other bands that you're yeah. friends with all crossing paths at the yeah. moment. And that's sort of like creating this buzz of Australian stuff. So, you know, and I think for people overseas, for them, like the Australian thing's a bit, exotic or something mm. so they you know well, it's definitely it's, different like yeah yeah it, it's a sound that isn't replicated anywhere yeah most of the time because of our accents and yeah <laughs> the loose delivery yeah i feel like it's also more earnest yeah like australian music it's more yeah definitely heartfelt and there's a bit more emotion in it yeah i used to book a, a venue on the sunny coast but the chats were like opening band for yeah. like a year mm. and then they dropped smoko and within six months, man, I was That's just like, crazy. I was getting 50 bucks. Yeah. And then, you know, my, one of my idols, Queens of Stone Age, was like, this is our favorite Australian band. Just, yeah. just the trajectory can be really, really quick for, yeah. for Australian bands. I feel like Australia also has like, you know, that tall poppy syndrome as well. Definitely, man. And it's almost, you have to go overseas and be acknowledged yeah. there. For Australians to go like, oh yeah, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're Australian. We we actually love them. We claim them. You know, you go <laughs> on a tour, yeah. <laughs> and then everyone in Australia is like, oh shit, we better actually go to that show. It's next fucking time. weird, man. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, just to finish off, boys, you got a show to warm up for, but you've been on the road a long time now. Top three tour tips just to keep the ship rolling. Always brush your teeth. Nice. You yeah. got an electric toothbrush. I feel or like no? manual. Uh, all right. I feel like yeah. <laughs> Try and how are we going to make these all not hygiene ones? You got to switch to electric, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, well, that's another thing you can't find the power adapter. all the time. Yeah, the true, yeah. So. Toothbrush, you know, you know, brushing teeth <laughs> always makes you feel like you got your life together. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like you could not have showered for days. Yeah, but just brushing. Not slept for days. Yeah. I reckon you know, Hitchhiker's Guide tip: always take a towel. All uh, right, you know, because that's like, a, that's a bulky uh, luggage item. Though. Yeah, but you know, it's like you got a blanket. You got something True. to cover your eyes with. Yeah, I didn't bring one because I can just borrow his one. Ah, yeah. it's a communal one person bring communal coffin <laughs> towel. <laughs> Few stains. <laughs> Shit, what's the third one? Um, what's a real good one? Don't think too hard. Doesn't yeah. matter that much. There's only two. Yeah, <laughs> two. No, it's got to be. Well, how do you how do you keep yourselves all, you know, upbeat? Because some of the the flying and getting up at four to hit a I think, plane I at think six. I think we're pretty like, good at that. Like, right. It just, it's pretty natural It's naturally us. chill. Uh, yeah, I feel like what happens is, yeah, we, we, we got like tour fitness, but it's sort mm. of like the body knows you can't get sick, you can't fucking yeah. drop out now. And then usually what happens is we'll get home and you'll be like sick for two weeks. Disintegrate. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. <laughs> well, you, ba you basically get pickled on the road. Bro. Yeah. I reckon, I reckon a third good one is a jacket with good pockets. Okay. Yeah. Because good one. you can use it as a pillow. Yeah. And store a bunch of shit in it. And then if you're sleeping in sketchy spots, yeah. you know, inside pockets are dope. You yeah. Put all your shit on the inside. Just remember to check those pockets before you hit the airport. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. All right, boys. Thank you very much for coming oh, to Mo's tonight. You. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you. having us. Six spot. And yeah, appreciate the support. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, it's Christian for Desert TV, and you're watching Coffin. Bye.
Bonsoir All right. Hey. All right. Is Jade here? Oi, where's where, we where's need Jade? help for this one? Where's Jade? You tell me. Yo, Jade, where you at? Where you at?
with joy, with joy. It's not over. to the start.
Thank, thank you, you, thank you. We'll see you next time. We'll be back. Oh, we'll, we'll see you right now. We'll have a beer. Oh, yeah, we'll see you at the bar. <laughs>